Now, you dropped out of high school? Yes. So I've... tell me about that and what was the motivation and the moment? Where, was it, where were you coming from? My mother actually made the executive decision and was kind of like the strong figure in it because I didn't want to leave high school. I was working at a tanning salon and paying for my cosmetology schooling in high school. Uh -huh. And so if I dropped out of high school, I was basically also a high school dropout and a beauty school dropout. And I really just wanted to graduate. I really wanted to have my cosmetology license. Like I was all about it. But I was so severely bullied to the point where like every single day at school wow. was just like kind of awful. And I remember um, they, I would have to go and talk to the counselors every morning before school started. So I had to get there even earlier and they would like just try and make sure everything's OK. But like when I would tell them what was going on, like instead of them being like, oh, that's really fucked up that this kid is doing this to you. They'd be like, well, you know, maybe if you don't want to be bullied, you should conform and maybe like not wear your purse and not wear uh -huh. your perfume and not wear your eyeliner. And like maybe you should just blend in a little bit better so that you don't get bullied and so you can finish school. And my mom looked at that and she was like, no, I'm not good. Like my son should be able to express himself freely and exist exactly. in the school who he is. There's 4,000 kids at the school. Why can't my son be who he is? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it was always like a back and forth thing. And I remember the breaking point for my mom was after we had talked to the counselors, we were walking down the hallway, actually leaving the school. And um, a kid in the hallway screamed. And wow. my mom turned around looked at him and she goes, grab my hand, Cameron. We are going back to the front office. And she said, I need all the paperwork. We are pulling my son out of the school. This is fucking bullshit. And so I went to homeschooling after that, which was actually quite nice, except I didn't actually do any work. Finish. <laughs> I didn't even finish the homeschooling, so I don't have like a GED or any kind of like, you know, document. Luckily you have your beauty, and your yeah. lips, your hair. Um, and so then what, was that a move into drag or was that a period of trying to just figure out that what you were gonna do? Cause you were you had dropped also out of beauty school like in Greece? Yes, yeah, so I, beauty school drop, drop out. out. Go back to high school. <laughs> ran, ran away to Austin, Texas with a stripper. Wow. And she nurtured pheromone and kind of like, she she was she wore wigs with me when we'd go out. You know, she would like do my makeup. She would help me with my liquid liner. You know, she was like my stripper godmother, Amazing. if you will. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of like how I was born. I out of a little bit of rebellion towards people that weren't supportive of me over like, you know, just wanting to exist and have fun with life and not feel constantly like everything I was doing shouldn't exist you know yeah you know what i mean exactly. like it was almost like we were just taking a stand against the school district and being like you are not gonna do this to some shining bright little star that's right <laughs> i always had this like little dream of like running away and becoming a showgirl and having yeah. big feather headdresses and swarovski crystals and just like live the fantasy in vegas but i never thought that like that would be within my price range as like you know a struggling artist yeah and, a friend of mine was like, you know, I have an extra room. You can rent it out. And I was like, well, how much is it? Because that's probably going to be really expensive. And he was like, bitch, just like, it's so cheap to live here. Give me like $350 a month. Wow. And like, that's like half the rent or whatever. And I was like, okay. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> my showgirl dreams uh, yeah, are coming let's true. Get the <laughs> so I, I put all my stuff in boxes. I shipped it to Vegas and I flew a Southwest flight straight to my dream. How long after that? before you applied for Drag Race, because you got on the first time you did it. I did. So as you know, I'm good friends with Magnus Hastings, and since I was making this money at this nightclub um, and w had no money in rent, I had some extra money laying around. And so I was like, Magnus, I know you did Courtney's tape. How much would you charge me to do mine? Like, let's do my tape. Yeah. And so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spill the beans on whatever that was, but he agreed to do it. I paid him with my little savings and I came to LA with all my drag and a big car. Wow. We filmed it in his parking lot. Amazing. <laughs> it's an apartment complex. <laughs> and we submitted it. And like, I did not think that I was gonna be chosen for Drag Race. I really didn't. I thought that this was gonna be like them getting to see who I am. Like, you know, they're gonna know that I exist mm -hmm. and that they'll like maybe consider me for future seasons. Right. I did not think like, oh my God, they're gonna give me a call and I'm gonna have to put together 35 looks in two weeks. You get to the workroom, it's a lot of pressure. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. And I thought my entrance look was like the most fabulous thing I've ever worn. A friend of mine let me borrow this like authentic 2007 Dolce and Gabbana sterling silver straight off the runway yeah. chain dress uh -huh. that <clears throat> is, I mean, literally probably still to this day the most expensive thing I've ever worn. Um, and I wore a pair of like little like silver uh, Louboutin Pigals and I was feeling my fucking oats and I walked in there and I was not faced by literally anybody. I was like, you know, I've got this. This is like, you know, in the bag, whatever. <laughs> um, but then like more girls started to come in after me mm -hmm. and I was like, and then I realized, oh my God, I've been following Peppermint forever. But I was like, you know, she'll, pro she'll probably go farther. You know, you go through all those things in your head right. while you're sitting there. Um, and then Aja walked in and Kamora, well, well, no, wait, wait, let's go back to when Kamora walked in. Yeah. That was a fucking gag because we actually both worked at Share Night Club for a while. And then she went to go, I think she went to like Piranha or Free Zone or some other club. Um, and so, I mean, we basically saw each other all the time. And like, I've known Kamora for years and I was like, I never thought that Kamora was the kind of girl that wanted to like be on Drag Race because she was yeah. always more of like a socialite. Like she loved like showing up with her posse of guys, right. looking all hot and uh -huh. like a slutty outfit, <laughs> like getting drunk and partying and dancing on the dance floor. Like she was like very much like the socialite of Vegas, like especially the gay world in Vegas. So when she walked in, I was, first of all, really relieved to see a familiar face. I was like, oh my God, what the heck? <laughs> we were just at the airport together. Right. How did we not see each other? Like, whoa. Um, so that was a gag. But then when Aja came in, I'd known her too. When Shea Coulee came in, I was like, this is going to be a competition, isn't mm -hmm. it? This is really going to be a competition, huh? Because I've been following Shay for a long time. Yeah, I knew she's she was no joke, sweetie. Cunty, fierce, gorgeous, amazing. And her walk-in line was so good. I didn't come to play, I came to slay. Oh yes, he did. She said that <laughs> and I, I turned around and I was like. <gasps> <laughs> and then when Sasha Velour came in, mm -hmm. she came in screaming. And at first it really startled me and I was like, <gasps> what's happening? <laughs> and then I turned around and I saw her and I couldn't help but just have like the biggest smile on my face. I was like, this is so good. I was so entertained by her and so like enchanted by her just from the first day. I will never forget it. I was like, she is going to be something that people aren't going to expect. I just knew there was something about her that was going to be. I didn't necessarily think as soon as she walked in that she was going to be the winner, but I was like, she's going to do something. She's going to pull out some stuff on the show that we're not expecting. Mm hmm. And she did, <laughs> right out her wig. Right out of her wig. <laughs> right out of her wigs and grace, honey. What do you think was some of the hardest stuff on the show? I think I struggled with the like anxiety that I face under pressure. Mm -hmm. And like you kind of only have a couple of hours to do certain things and you don't really get time to think about what you're gonna execute. You just have to like execute something. Yeah. And you have to use it within the means of stuff that you brought or uh, minuscule sort of things that they provide. So uh, every time we were standing there in the workroom waiting for RuPaul to come out and tell us what our challenge was, I was like, please don't let it be something impossible for me. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> please. Yeah. Now, did you cry as much as it looked like you did? I cried twice as much as it looked like I did. <laughs> they cut me out. They cut out some of my best cry scenes. Uh, right. They did. <laughs> The whole situation, I don't know what it was. To this day, I still have not cried as much as I cried filming Drag Race. Uh -huh. But something about that intensified, emotional, like once in a lifetime, like ex dream come true happening. Like I, th I would cry even when something was happy. Like when Nina got her phone call from her mom a week before I got mine, I cried. Oh. It was so sweet seeing <laughs> Nina's mom come in and like kind of, especially right when Nina needed it. Yeah. It was like, I was like, Nina, do you just love her? Do you just love her? <laughs> so yeah, they. I, I don't think they had enough time to show all the times that I cried. I love it. I mean, people started loving you for your crying, loving you for your sad faces, and I'm sitting here right now loving you with your sad faces. I'm like, she is cute. <laughs> <laughs> on that Drag Race reunion, we kind of got to see 
a little bit more of a different side of your personality. And we also got to see what kind of tensions might have been bubbling under in that break between when everybody was best friends and best, RuPaul's best friend race um, yeah. to the time when the show was released. And suddenly things kind of changed. Want to talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, the reunion was... A, like it was intense because there were some unspoken issues that a lot of us had with each other yeah. that we hadn't had the time really to even hash out. And it just so happened that we had time on national TV to do so. You sure did. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think you kind of got to, I mean, I think that we're all still really close as a season, but it was a time that we kind of hashed out some issues that we had some issues plus that was filmed the day after the finale yes so y'all really knew who won and you knew what that it was like the experience was kind of done and it was like now a post-mortem to really get in there well we didn't necessarily know who won but oh, right, we knew who didn't, didn't, knew win. didn't win right yeah because yeah, i forgot they they only we do it when they air didn't win oh. so um <laughs> it kind of opened the floodgates if you will 